Hey all, this program is rated M for Mature, presenting Master and Apprentice Photography. Well, we are now cold open. Were we not recording that whole conversation? We were not gems record- there. There was, yes. <laughs> but we're saving them for the next episode. Yeah. I get, you know what? We were talking about like archives and, uh, and hard drives, which might not be the most exciting thing for new photographers. Yeah. Just based on what you were telling me, it could get a little daunting. It was exciting for me because I like tech stuff, but yeah, exactly. You will, you will love that. Anyways, <laughs> basically to summarize, um, back up your photos if they're important to you. Yeah. Always back up everything, but yeah. photos are things you cannot replace. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah. And I guess we can also talk about like pricing and packaging things like that yeah later on anyways yeah welcome back to episode five i already said cold open so we already started yeah it's already open i'm i I laugh when when uh when we uh when i saw the outline for what you wanted to talk about today just because uh we're gonna be talking about post-production photoshopping and uh all this digital stuff and uh this week i uh you know i I sat down and thought and actually someone whose uh whose opinion uh i value very much um you know, uh, she had to listen to the podcast and, you know, she obviously thinks I'm hilarious because of course, but you know, <laughs> she was like, Oh, it kind of sounds like you hate photography. <laughs> when I <listened> to it. <laughs> and like, and like, I kind of felt like I, it, it kind of hurt when she said that. Cause, um, I know I rant a lot and it, and it's funny, but I never want it to come across as if I hate what I do because I, I do love what I do. I, th- I think this is like this, and in, even when we spoke about creating a podcast, it was all about like a cathartic release. So I think I was <laughs> yeah. just like, you know, I like to vent a lot, you know, like things that clients do to bother me, you know, et cetera. Like every, every industry has their, you know, like something to complain about, right? Like if you work in a restaurant, you might love cooking food, but you're going to, you know, hate the customers. Yeah. You're going to hate like a lot of things <laughs> that happen working in a restaurant, you know, or, uh, you know, like working in IT, you might really like uh, working with computers and things like that, but then. There's there's lots of podcasts dedicated, I'm sure, to that and and those things. So I just wanted to reiter- reiterate that uh, that I do love what I do and I love talking about it as well. Um, if I didn't love doing this, like I wouldn't I wouldn't be so enthusiastic every week to you know yeah to speak with you and things <laughs> like that. And like I love you know like being along here for for your journey, like discovering something that I love so much. So I'm I'm really happy. But uh, like I told you, I I'm I'm very excited because I purchased a film camera. It's funny that we're talking about Photoshop this week because I was like, I really want to reconnect with my photography and like, you know, remember like what I love and just like creating and things like that. And because so much of my work right now is sitting behind a computer, I'm like, no, I need to, I need to like, I I do spend a lot of time taking photos, but you know, I just want to like make some photos, like grab my, grab a camera. And I think like one of the projects I want to do that I've thought about for years and it's so easy to do and I don't know why I've never done it is I just want to like make a little collection of portraits of like the people that are the most important to me you know things like mm-hmm. you know my parents and like my siblings and my, like some of my best friends and I just want to like you know maybe ask them to share like an anecdote or a story and then like make that into a book and I, I want to do it in medium format and try to like you know just like take some nice classic solid portraits that I've always loved doing so you know no photoshop just like on film get them processed and develop and uh, and do that you want to take photos for you exactly very interesting and, and to go back to the uh thing that you were saying about how you you love what you do mm-hmm. there's definitely a difference between hating something and being passionate about something yeah marlon is passionate about what he does that's why he gets angry about it <laughs> yeah. i'm also really passionate about hating things uh, that's very true like yes. just in general like i really like i like uh you love being I believe, mad at something i believe in like the sith creed <laughs> which is <laughs> which actually our podcast is named after but uh but uh but like yeah i don't i have no problem unleashing my anger and hatred when i need it but it doesn't mean that uh that i don't love the art of photography and things like that but uh he loves it so much it hurts yeah i love it so much it hurts <laughs> and there's also a lot of like you know as uh, I, I know how I come off in the podcast, but you know, there's there are lots of things like you know, imposter syndrome 
which uh which will be fun to talk about once you start taking photos and getting better at it we can like discover that you know as you like you start off you're like i know nothing and then you know a little bit you're like i know everything and then you become like <laughs> really you know you become better and you're like oh i i suck at this and then you're seeing like professionals who you're competing with like doing great works and you're like wait are they better than me and then like you know and then like you come to this acceptance you're like yeah i guess i'm all right and fuck it <laughs> wow that sounds like a really like that's an emotional roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And you just like uh, sit there laying laying in bed, just staring at the ceiling, like I could be better, or I am the best. Just like yeah. depending on what day it is. Mm-hmm. You get that in martial arts too. You know, when you start off, you're like, I don't know anything. And then you're like, uh, you know, you start having like a few fights and experience, uh, you know, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm unstoppable. I'm a beast. I'm going to go to the UFC. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to kick everyone's ass. And then like you fight someone that's like not even that good, but just has that much more experience than you. And it's so humbling. And you're like, no, yeah. <laughs> they put you on your back and then you're staring at the ceiling like, okay, I got some things I need to learn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyways, but that's that we can all talk about in a future, uh, future episode because today it's about fixing it in post yeah a photographer's least favorite <laughs> expression yeah i guess uh thinking about it now fixing it in post it, it implies that you're just fixing bad pictures which will roll into my first question mm-hmm. are you better at photoshop because you spend more time fixing bad pictures or because you're touching up good pictures well photoshop is now such an important part of uh, of a photographer's tool set skill set toolkit <laughs> that um it's it's, it's kind of like baseball when you're playing baseball you need to be good at hitting and good at fielding and they're kind of like two separate sports almost and yeah you need to like be good at both of them in order to play like you can be a great photographer with a great eye and then you're like sit down in front of a computer and you're like i don't even know where to begin like i guess like i don't have a sense for colors or you know contrast or something and there are people who are professional retouchers but like they can never set up lighting or something for a portrait shoot so it's um it's interesting that you have to be good at both and when you say like fixing it in post like i have clients that are where i'm just like oh can you step like one one little thing to the left i just there's like a pesky sign on the wall as the background i just you know i don't want to like it, it'll just be easier to just block it out and they go well oh can't you fix that in photoshop i'm like yeah I can, I can fix it in photoshop but maybe i don't want to spend two hours like making sure the bricks line up <laughs> and like the colors match and things like that when you can just take one step to your left so there's this concept that like photoshop is this like ultimate god tool where you just press one button and it just makes you like <laughs> look fantastic and it's yeah. it's not and people are very liberal when they're not the ones retouching like with my time they're like yeah just fix it in here so um <laughs> So it's it's easier to do it right the first time than to fix it later. Absolutely. You you always want to get it as as well as you can in in camera. There are times when things like if I'm photographing in studio and I have a piece of tape to mark the, where the um subject needs to stand, like I I know I it, I know it's like a three button press to fix once I have the final final image and like oh you want to get it as close to in camera as you want, like don't have the tape there and make sure the model you know, or a person you're photographing stays there, but like they won't. They'll always like kind of start swaying off to one side where like maybe their arm is off the background and then, then it becomes like a much worse process to like fill in the background around someone's like clothing and and body. So I'm just like, here's the tape. Please stand on the fucking tape. <laughs> <laughs> they never do, but <laughs> but it's also like, will remind me to tell them. But um, so when it comes to like actual bad pictures there are people that have an uninteresting photo you know but maybe they they start messing around with the highlights and the contrast and the um you know adding adding like effects and colors and color toning and split toning and color grading You, you you can make a bad photo more interesting but you can never make a bad photo good it's okay. it's like it's like you can be the best chef in the world and if someone's like yeah i got this rot these rotten ingredients from the from the market but like you're a great chef so you know like of course it's going to be good and that's it's really not the truth like uh like a great meal at like a, at the best restaurants they start with great ingredients and that's what like a great photo is like you can improve on a photo in photoshop or uh or lightroom and anything but you can't you can't make an, an you can't make a bad photo excellent just through photoshop okay that's my that's my take on it is like and it's not even worth it's not even worth 
stressing about like just you know learn from your mistake take a better picture or look for something else on the shoot that um that's worthwhile and i i feel like i feel like people need to learn that in other avenues too like parenting like if you have a shit kid like don't focus on it give it away and just <laughs> start again try something yeah new. exactly have a better kid and just <laughs> or get a dog <laughs> <laughs> maybe kids aren't your thing yeah put, put the kid down put the camera away Get a dog. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, then I guess this rolls into the next question I had was, uh, mm-hmm. are some images just not salvageable then? Like, mm-hmm. can everything be... Well, you said you can improve upon them. Right. But just because you can improve yeah. upon them doesn't mean they're worth yeah. uh, well, spending time on, basically, right? There are images that can be salv- salvageable. Okay. That doesn't mean necessarily make them a good photo, but, you know, like... Um, there are many elements to a good photo. Like it could be, um, like basically the big three are like, uh, lighting, subject, moment. Okay. Like you can have, and, and you need, like three out of three is great. Two out of three is what you want for, uh, for a, a decent photo. Like for instance, like, uh, so in Jewish weddings, they put you on the chair, they bounce you up and down, right? Mm-hmm. It's called the Hora. So it's an interesting moment and it's a good subject. You know, it's a happy couple, like being thrown up in a chair. Sometimes the DJ's light gets a little wonky and is like too bright on a face or like it's blown out it's doing something weird. Sometimes you're like your flash doesn't fire. So obviously I take a lot of photos to choose from, but sometimes maybe like there's a particular moment I want or it's like my, yeah, you know, I'm just going to blame my assistant on this. So her fat <laughs> flash doesn't fire. Like she really fucked it up, you know, mm-hmm. but it's like there was a certain like moment. It was just good. Maybe like his, uh, like he was about to fall off the chair. He's making a funny face and now it's underexposed because like, um, because the flash didn't go but maybe if i like drag the exposure slider all the way up you can start seeing stuff and it'll be like pretty grainy and a little wonky looking but you know what if i turn it black and white and add some clarity like it's uh it's 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 salvable salvageable it's it's a funny moment oh he's making this funny face he thinks he's gonna fall off the chair and you're like so it's still gonna be a great memory it's not gonna be like oh i'm not gonna put this up for an award because it's mm-hmm. not like technically sound, but like I still can save the f- image in 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 Photoshop. Okay, so if a client comes to you and says, "I really like this pic, this uh, picture you took," um, but you look at it and go, "Wow, that was a pretty bad picture," you can <laughs> make it better in yeah. post if uh, right. if they really want it. Yeah. Well, actually, so I have a I have a funny story with that. Um, one of my couples, um, I done their wedding. Um, sometimes my wife likes to help me choose the photos and I was going through them and uh, we did a photo outside and there was like a harsh shadow kind of going like across the groom's face. Like it was like diagonal, whereas like it was just like darker on top, lighter on the bottom, which mm-hmm. is like a pretty big, you know, technical error. And I, and, and I, I looked at it. I was like, you know what? Like here, turn around a bit. Like I got more even lighting and like took the picture. My wife saw the, like, I, I don't delete, you should never delete photos from your, uh, from your camera as you're going. Like, I just sort them out later. Mm-hmm. I don't want to run the risk of, like, corrupting a card in the camera. And, uh, and she goes, Oh, I love that photo. I was like, Oh, well, I can't give them that. Like, look at that shadow. She's like, I don't know. Like, I didn't notice. Like, they're not going to notice. I'm like, Yeah, but like, <laughs> Marlon Kuhnreich photography, like, I'm, like, I can't put out. She's like, I don't know. I think it's like a great look. I was like, You know what? I'll make it black and white and we'll just call it art. And like I mean, black and white. And like I didn't even think any of it. Sure, like you know, if my wife sees something, I don't let them have it. And like, uh, so I I know this couple of. Anyways, the groom is now my accountant, but uh, I went to his house and like the picture is blown up eight by ten, like hanging on their wall. Oh my gosh! And I was like, oh, like that's the like you printed that. They're like, yeah, we love it. It's like one, it's our favorite photo from the uh, <laughs> from our, our couple. And I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> You know, oh, it's you like, that so one. It's, yeah, so it's like, you know, it's like, uh, you know, not my best work technically, but you know, it's a moment they love and it's like a subject they love themselves. So, you know what? The lighting didn't work out, but you know, through, through Photoshop, it's, you know, I, uh, so you're able to salvage that by switching it to a uh, black and white. Exactly. No, oh, that's my trick. It, so if you ever, if you ever fuck up a photo, you just make it black and white and call it art. That's it. Just make it black and white, like uh, up the grain, like maybe like make it look a bit more film looking, like um, it's called crushing the blacks, you know, make them a little, a little like vintagey looking and you're like, yeah, it's art. You are not the first person to tell me that. And that is hilarious that that is a like a universal thing. Mm -hmm. 
it's like yeah if you if you fucked up so bad just black and white Mm -hmm. wow okay (laughs) so i think we we talked about this a little bit uh offline before we started recording um you were saying that you just don't even bother with photos bad photos you just skip them if it's not an important moment and it's just bad like it's and it, it it's hard as an artist whether you're professional or amateur your work is still important to you it's like you know mm-hmm. and you have to some it's it's hard to like just let it go but sometimes you have to be like no it's not working it's it's just not worth it like don't don't focus on on saving something that's that's not going to be good like just work on making something better Okay. But that's why on a photo shoot, like I like to do like safe options and, and artsier options. And sometimes the artsy stuff, I like, I'm like, wow, I like, I love this. I'm going to, you know, like I'm glad this worked out. And sometimes I'm just like, yeah, it's not that good. Let's uh, not let anyone see it. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably have more that uh, get cut than, or, well, I shouldn't say yep. that you're a very good photographer. So you know what you're doing. You're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for podcast reasons, everything I take is gold. I'm at like a hundred percent keep. <laughs> But uh, yes, in photography, we have what's called a keeper rate. And usually, like, the better you are, the, like, the less actually, like, actually, like, filters. Because, uh, you know, a, a beginning photographer who's only photographed one wedding, you'll go to their website, you'll see 50 photos from the same wedding. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, maybe, like, people who photograph, you know, 30, 40 weddings a year, you know, you might only see five weddings from that, five photos from that whole year on their website. And they're choosing the best. And it's yeah. going to make them look even better because they're only cherry picking like the the absolute best moment. So you, your taste becomes a bit more discerning, you know, because there's only so many like here's a couple kissing, here's a couple kissing, here's a couple kissing. Yeah. That you're like, oh well, here's how I how I did things differently for this one, you know, like, and you're trying to showcase more your creativity than just here's proof that I show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like you said, anybody can get lucky and take a good photo, but mm-hmm. you want to show like you're consistently taking different kinds of photos but still yeah. having that creativity and being good yeah okay so you, you mentioned keeper rate what is that um like uh let's say like i've said before um okay you may now kiss the bride i go you know like as they get closer that the that sound i just made was my camera going click 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 that's birth mode or whatever right <laughs> yeah exactly i got it and, yeah and so uh um, <laughs> so uh obviously you don't want to you don't want to just like hold your shutter down, just wave it at anything. But like a moment like that, like I want to get the, like the moment where their lips just touch, like then when they have firmly planted and then when they're pulling apart sort of thing. So, you know, you get like uh, some options of like the tension, the actual kiss and maybe like the romantic one of them just like slightly, slightly, their lips slightly touching. And mm-hmm. then, uh, so like maybe I took 20 photos in that sequence just to get those three. So the keeper rate would be three out of 20. Okay. Or like, you know, like I say, if I'm taking 10,000 images at a wedding and then I deliver 800 or 500, so the keeper rate, you know, is 500 out of 10,000. Okay, so that's basically like a benchmark or a measurement. Mm -hmm. Do other photographers go, my keeper rate is this, what's yours? No, no, no. It's just for your own personal, like, accountability or something, I guess? Exactly. Like, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything because all that matters at the end is that, is the work that you give yeah actually like i take a lot of i take a lot more photos than than many people i speak to and i learned that from um you know from the photographer who kind of taught who started me you know gave me my first job in in wedding photography he was like yeah just you know it's like it's a memory card just shoot as much as you can like give yourself as much option like Mm -hmm. be creative and do everything but i also know people that you know sometimes i see photographers and they're like oh i just i wish i had the shot you know, like they're they're they were blinking in, in, in all the photos. I was like, Oh, how many did you take? You know, of like let's say like the first kiss. They're like, Oh, three. And you're okay. like you're like, Oh shit, why do you only take three? And they're like, Well, a good photographer will like capture the moment. I'm like, Yeah, but you like you didn't fucking capture it. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's no limit to how much you can capture it. Yeah, exactly. Like of course you wanna like, you know, uh be in the moment and capture that decisive moment, but um the best term I've heard from this and was taught to me was called like uh so it's like uh, anticipations. You're yeah. patient for that moment to happen. You you imagine, you know you wait for for that perfect moment to build up, and you go for that burst like once it's happening. So you have options from the moment instead of just trying to capture that one frame. You tr- capture the sequence of the moment happening, 
and then you can choose the best from there. Obviously, there's technical limitations like buffer speed of the camera. If you if you sit there bursting the whole time, that like your camera's just gonna like freeze up as it's like trying to record all the images to the memory mm-hmm. card. And then if something else happens right after, like you're fucked because your camera won't <laughs> do it. So like, don't uh, yeah. It's it's a, it's about finding that that balance. Okay, and yeah, like you're saying, you you have a bunch of memory cards, so like it's not like you have a, a finite amount of pictures you can take. I mean, there is, but like you'll never hit that limit probably. And like a single photo yeah, shoot. Exactly. It's not like film where you're like, yeah. okay, I only have this yeah. much, you know, film on me. Yeah. Twenty four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, I only took three. Yeah, yeah you only have twenty four mm-hmm. images per roll, but Yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing in the film days, you would show up to a wedding, okay, I brought ten rolls of film, let's do it. You know? You have you take 360 photos that day. Yeah, and then your your keeper rate has to be a lot higher than taking 10,000. Exactly, and that's why a lot of like traditional moments that pe- that we still do, like things like posing for, to cut the cake, is because like a photographer is like, oh, here's an opportunity I have where I know they'll stand together and look at me, and like I can get like a portrait that I don't have to worry about if it like comes out. I can control the exposure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Whereas like in the digital age, it's like, it's like just do is it. Is that I, necessary? Say, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm just gonna burst mode it, and then I'll get as many. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah, I don't. I don't need to burst mode to cut in the cake. You but, could though. Yeah, I, I could. Yeah, you know what? You're right. <laughs> you want to see when the the knife gets into the cake, and then when it gets halfway, and then when it hits the, hits the bottom of the tray. Sometimes my my I leave my camera like a if I forget to switch off of like what's called, like high speed mode, mm-hmm. like which is like burst mode, because like my camera has three different uh, speed settings. It has uh, like slow, medium, fast. And if I'm on fast by accident, like I'm just taking a picture of like someone with their grandma and I end up with like 10 <laughs> and it's like, they're like each, each image is like imperceptible to the other. <laughs> I'm just filling up, I'm just filling up my hard drive for nothing. Eh, you fix it in post though, right? Yeah. Well, I don't fix I just delete the others. That's not what the fuck to fix. But uh, yeah. Um, I mean, one thing I've had to do for a, for a client was I had to remove someone from a family photo. Wow an aunt and uncle that got divorced and they requested that i just remove the aunt from the photo i was like you know what the cheaper option is is to just like come back in your suits and let me just take this new family <laughs> photo it would take like five minutes just come, just show up here stand here all done yeah, it took me eight hours Ugh. to photoshop her out paint back like recreate the background paint it in like recreate his suit and like his arm like stitched oh together from God. other photos and things like that, and like I did it, and actually like the results were were amazing. Like they were they were completely impressed. It cost them a lot of money. I was about to say you, you, it would like you yeah. said it would have been cheaper and faster if they just like showed yeah. up in their exactly. uh, outfits and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and I actually I, I remember I I retouched photos for uh, a musician. She got a photo shoot. She was not happy with the images. She said they look kind of bland. Can you just punch them up on Photoshop? And she sent me like multiple images and i said you know what for my time like messing around with these like you you can just pay me to do a new shoot and you'll end up with much better stuff and she was like no i don't want to go through all that i was like okay i'll take the money <laughs> from you <laughs> you know make these look like vintage film or something <laughs> just turn them all black and white and now they're art <laughs> so to the pros that's that's so crazy like it would be cheaper and easier and less time consuming to just redo the pictures but they're like yeah no fix these bad pictures i don't like mm-hmm. like that just that just boggles my mind it's yeah. like if you're not happy with them then well because people think like you know they think like oh you'll photoshop them they'll look they'll look great because that's what the tool is but also like one some of the things with photoshop like we haven't touched on today is like so every image you you see in your daily life, and we've spoke about this before, like how, how photography is important because you're bombarded by images all day, like online, mm-hmm. you know, out at the mall, like on billboards, on TV, um, like everything is so is photoshopped. It's not realistic. So then when people see photos of themselves that aren't photoshopped or they're not like uh, they're not retouched in terms of body manipulation or things like that, and they think like, well, why do my arms look weird? I'm like, no, your arms look normal, like their arms in the photos look fake yeah you know because like you're supposed to have like (laughs) like like regular body proportions you're (laughs) supposed to be able to see your kneecaps you know you're not a cartoon so so it's things like that like everyone wants like that magazine cover shoot and like it's completely like you know with no pores with you know your eyes are popping out like these bright brilliant colors like your cheekbones are like have these magnificent highlights on them 
and like that's that's really only something that can be done in in Photoshop, and that's you know that's why we we see it now. But a lot of these techniques were also there in the dark room. It was just really really difficult to do. So unless you were you know had the budget to do that, yeah, it uh, you won't uh, it won't have been seen. And the people on the other end of the camera, like you were saying, they think it's just a couple clicks of a mouse and it's done. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They don't realize that uh, you've just lost your weekend because they're not happy yeah. with those photos. Yeah, exactly. Well, I get all, you know, when I, we're taking pictures of someone, you could go, well, why do I look big? I don't look that big in real life. <laughs> so that's not how cameras work. Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there, there are some interesting things because, like, like a, a photo is just a two-dimensional representation of a 3D object. Mm-hmm. So there are physics that come into play, like compression and things like that, and, like, the way your eye kind of, like... Um, translates that into uh into how you really look yeah but like like generally like let's just say when i when i'm photographing personal trainers <laughs> they're like yeah cool that's that's me and uh like or when i see myself in a in a in a photo i'm not like why don't i look ripped i'm like oh right i drank beer and ate chips last night <laughs> i'm not like what's wrong with your lens or you didn't pose me right it's all about perspective I, you know, yeah <laughs> and I also get like, and like I've had, I've had, I've had people that are like, oh, I love the photo, I li- like it's great, I like the express, the lighting's great. Do you mind just like tucking this in a little bit? I'm like, don't worry, I got gotcha. you. Like, you know, like you know, a little love handle push in there or something. Like, you know, it's uh, a lot of people do it, and it's it's fine. And like, you know, you wanna you wanna like a, like your your portrait and your image, and that's fine. But like, sometimes people get mad at me. They're like, well, why didn't you fix this? And, like, I think, like, the worst possible thing a photographer can do is just start, like, manipulating someone's body without, like, before being requested <laughs> yeah. to. And I'm like, yeah, listen, I thought you were fat, so I made you look skinnier than you are. So they just assume that, like, they're going to yeah. change how they look? Yeah. Wow. I've also I've also had the opposite where, like, uh, where someone's like, I can't believe you just, like, like photoshopped me like that. Like, it made me look, made me look this way. Like, and I'm like, no, like. I, I I didn't. I was like, I just like opposed you, and you look great. And you you know, and I, I'm like, here's the before and after. And like, I show them that like nothing's you know changed except for like the colors and like contrast and stuff. And they're like, oh damn. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's so. So Photoshop is both a, a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely it's definitely a blessing in terms of creativity and things you're able to do in Photoshop and like you know the combination between capturing the scene and then. And then manipulating it after, and it's funny because like uh, like there's plenty of of examples of like uh, you know magazines they do these like crazy photo manipula- manipulations, and at one point it becomes well like who who really created this image is who should be given the most credit the photographer or the retoucher? Ooh, and that's a big debate in photography where like um, you always see like hair by makeup by photography by you know, art director, but you never see, you know, stylist, but you never see like retouched by. Because they don't want to advertise that the photo is retouched. That's a big like no-no in like that right, marketing exactly. world, even though everybody knows that's that gets done. Exactly. So it's, uh, you know, so I think it's it's disingenuous not to, uh, not to credit like the, you know, someone who might have had like 50% in the process of, of making a, a great image. Wow. Yeah. So like, the photographer probably spent a day, you know, on the photo shoot or something, a couple hours on the photo shoot. The the person sitting at the computer, you know, with mm-hmm. Photoshop up, they probably spent, you know, a week trying to get that, yeah. you know, perfect. Yep, exactly. That's insane. And they let's talk about a thankless job. Yeah. And something we can talk about is, uh, you know, like um, like uh, outsourcing editing, which is very very popular these days. Uh, it's something I think I would like to pursue. I'm too much of a perfectionist like it's cliche i'm not like one of those people that's like what's your biggest weakness i'm like my biggest weakness is i try too hard and i love you <laughs> I know <laughs> and i give it i give it a hundred percent effort it's um i have i have outsourced my my uh my images and they sometimes they come back and just uh it's it's like good enough but i notice like oh they didn't they just like didn't like the skin tones are a little off i'm like you can tell they were just like yeah I'll press this button here's my preset Thanks. Yeah. So, like, when it comes to outsource, uh, uh, let's see. I think I had a question regarding this. Um, yeah, I do, but we'll ask that later. But when it comes to uh, outsourcing, I picture it as like a uh, a time saving aspect, mm-hmm. not a can this person do it better than me. Right. And so that's when you have to like get hands off. Uh, yeah. You deliver the pictures to them and say, "I just don't have time to edit this. Please make these, you know, 
please fix up the well, color I mean, and whatnot. It's it's the trade it's the trade off. Like number one, it's it it does cost money. Mm-hmm. It's a huge time saver, and a lot of my time is taken up on editing. And maybe if I had less editing, I'd be a happier person. Yeah. But then this podcast would not be as funny as it is. <laughs> so um, there's that. But um, it's also I'm uh, like I own my own business. My business is my name. It's I don't work for a company mm-hmm. that just hires photographers and you know has lots of um, staff. You know has yeah. yeah exactly. Whereas you know you're just showing up, you're doing a job. Like you you care, you want to make your clients happy, but like at the end of the day, you don't care. You know someone else is going to retouch your photos for you, and you just you click and and go home. Like like my photos have my you know like my name is attached to it. Like my clients will remember my name. They're like yes, you know like it's 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 very personal to me, and so I like I'm. I always want my photos to look the best they can be, and so you're if I'm unable in to, control of that. Yeah, you're unable to let go of control because it has the potential to adversely affect the quality. Mm-hmm. Even though, like in reality, somebody just has a black and white photo blown up hanging on their wall somewhere <laughs> that you were like, "This is garbage. Why? <laughs> yeah. Why am I investing time in this?" That, that's <laughs> actually a very good point. But yeah, so like, listen, um, as I as I've I've realized like I can cut a few corners here and there. Like there's times I like, get a reception where like um or or like uh, at you know at a wedding party where um maybe the DJ's shining like a red light somewhere and then if you got too close to the DJ booth like everyone's faces were way too red and at at one point I'd be like oh like let me like spend some time and like you know I'll, I'll try to copy paste the settings but I want to make these look a little better than they are and then at one point I'm just like you know what the DJ was shining a red light they have red faces fuck it they look red here's <laughs> here's your photos like you like you hired this guy who brought red lighting that's why it looks red you know and I and I delivered them and like the no one said anything they're just like yeah we love it like you really captured the feel of the the party I'm like oh cool 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 cool, cool. <laughs> so it's also learning like like what I think of great image should look like to like like what they actually care about so I, i've been doing like not not that i try less hard but like the part that takes the longest for me is like colors and tones and like maybe fixing skin like maybe i'm I'm sitting there fixing like pimples on a photo that they'll never use so like lately i've been not dialing it back but like um being more selective yeah like i, I have this problem of like really trying to nail nail it instead of like yeah this looks great you know and then uh and what I do is I'm just like, oh, like if there's if there's anything on a photo and you notice like maybe like there's like uh like obviously like very de- like um obvious like uh pimples and things I will take out. But if it's just like a little bit of dryness on your forehead, but it's like a party photo that maybe you, you're not ever going to print or anything, you know, and I just go, oh, if it's like really means something to you, like maybe it's your best friend from, you know, school. and I didn't know that and you really want this like printed and stuff like, yeah, so get back to and like, you know, like, let me know, like you want like the friend skin retouched because I'm really focusing on the bride and the groom. Mm-hmm. So it's like that, that kind of thing. And that's, uh, I've been able to, to work a bit faster and like, let go, of, let go of that. Okay. And I could like really relate to that. Cause like editing this podcast, I'll be sitting there. I'm <laughs> like, Oh man, there's, there's this little tiny noise in the background. Let me get rid of that. Oh, there's an echo here. Yeah. Let me get rid of that. And then like last week I was editing it right until I uploaded it. And mm-hmm. about halfway through, I was like, you know what? Marlon's playing with this keyboard. Who cares? It's there. I'm not going to remove these key <laughs> these key clicks. Yeah, Marlon's an idiot. <laughs> like this is this is not a professional setup. Like yeah. people listening to this are going to realize Marlon's going to hit his desk a few times. He's going <laughs> to play around with this yeah. keyboard in the middle of uh, us talking. It's boy, that's that felt so bad. Set. I was like, I wasn't even like, I wasn't even. <laughs> I was just <laughs> clicking my cherry browns. <laughs> they just sound so good. <laughs> not removing that i am not removing yeah. that <laughs> but uh yeah i also hate the sound of my own voice but that i think everyone does everyone i've spoken you to you can't just cover up your voice with keyboard clicks though that's not how podcasts no, work i can't but i wish i had <laughs> i wish uh i wish i had some radio equipment that made me sound like hey this is my <laughs> <laughs> wait so you think there's radio equipment that makes you sound good but you can't fix photos in photoshop that's the yeah i mean like i i guess obviously <laughs> You'd want to start off with like a deep, sexy voice, but like I can't do that, and you need me, like personally, to to be here. So, got to work with what you got. So you want me to just alter everything in post? Okay, got it. <laughs> exactly. Fix it. Fix it in post. Um, okay, so this brings me to my next question. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, that's, that's that's a horrible segue. I don't know why I, I <laughs> did it that way. Next question. <laughs> next question. <laughs> 
cold question. Cold segue. <laughs> cold segues. <laughs> cold segue. Uh, so you mentioned that you can outsource your photography, but um, are your no, well, no the editing, the editing, yes, <laughs> the Photoshop. I would love to be. I would love to be able to outsource both. <laughs> just have your name on the company and be like, yeah, just like, send <laughs> yeah. other people here, and then they they deliver the the memory cards and then just hand it off to an editor. And you're like, man, this is this is easy. I love this photography thing. Okay, yeah. uh, can you be a successful photographer without any Photoshop slash editing skills, or do you basically need those these days? Even if you want to outsource, having the ability to, to do that is like a requirement still. Um, do you know Do you know the name Annie Leibovitz? No, any name you mention, I probably won't know. I'm sorry. It's okay. She's a she's a very well known photographer. She like uh she worked with Hunter S. Thompson. Now I feel super I feel super dumb now because I don't know the name. Well, Thanks. like you're st- you're starting <laughs> photography. I know. Listen, so so like I'll, I'll speak to our, like I'm like yeah I'm a photographer. I'm uh, been doing this you know 15 years. Like started as a kid. Like um I'm you know I think I'm amazing. I've won awards. People are like oh do you know this photographer? They're like making big waves in New York. I'm like nope. <laughs> <laughs> like okay. are you sure they're really well known? They're like big on YouTube. I'm like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm like, it's not me. Don't care. Yeah, yeah. If it's not an epic mealtime episode that I've been on on YouTube, like I don't, I don't watch it. So, <laughs> so don't, don't worry. But Annie Leibovitz is a uh, is a big name portrait artist. She does, uh, she does a lot of the Vanity Fair stuff. If you've seen, uh, if you've ever picked up an issue of Vanity Fair, like that's it's, it's her that's taking the photo. Okay. And, um And so she she famously doesn't do any of the retouching. Really? Yeah. And. uh you know, but she was famous before there. You know, before you know when she was shooting film. Okay, so she's already so, like established. Established. She's a good, okay. Exactly. But that makes more sense then. But uh, there are so many retouching services. Like you can get your photos retouched on Fiverr. So if you take good photos and you have something that people want to see, you can find someone else to retouch them. That's um. That's not um. It's not necessary. I mean, you should learn how to do it. It's the same thing. Like, if you're a baseball player and you can't bat, but you can pitch, you just play in the American League. <laughs> oh, ouch. Well, it's true, right? Uh, you have a you have a designated you have a DH. Same thing. If you can hit, but you can't field, so you know, like Big Poppy. <laughs> okay, so actually, that that's uh, <laughs> not the not the baseball thing, but the. Uh... Being also, able to but, thing. That's, uh, but it's good. the opposite. There, there are people who are professional retouchers and they don't take photos, but they're very good at Photoshop. Yeah, because like you said, the skills are not, they don't overlap at all. So, right, exactly. Like, you know, you develop a good eye for things, mm-hmm. but, uh, but it's, you know, being able to, to translate it. And, uh, everyone has their own, uh, unique, uh, like, uh, eye and, and, and feel for Photoshop. Mm hmm. You'll always want to like remove the skin that might like look similar, but you know, some people have different attention to detail and there's, there's so many techniques in Photoshop to do the same thing, but it's the same thing in photography. Like, uh, we might be taking a picture in the exact same lighting conditions of the same person and like our photos will not look anything alike. Because of like camera settings, lenses and hardware and stuff like that or whatever we want. Like, uh, we're different heights. So the camera will be at different angles. You know, like it depends where you stand and everything. It's uh like you can't. So it's the same thing for Photoshop. Like when you're adding highlights to someone's cheek, someone might go brighter. Someone might go a bit more subtle. You know, someone might go, you know, it's um you will always get like a different result. So both the photography and the Photoshop process are very art heavy. There's no like algorithm you can like type in and go, OK, I need to touch up this photo, uh, fix the lighting or something like that. There's no like right. mathematical formula. No. Like it's just no. doing it by eye, and it's but it's the same thing you'll learn as you uh, when you get your camera and you start doing photos. Like um, you can do automatic settings, but like it'll like uh, like automatic is you know will never get you what what you want. Okay, it'll do its best approximation. And when you when you want to you know do your best at something, you wanna you want to do it. You want to be in control of it. Okay, so um, I'm also not a control freak in anything else in my life. <laughs> If you're if I'm hanging out with my my buddies and I'm like, hey, let's go get burgers, and they go, no, I'd rather get sushi. I'm like, cool, sushi it is, you know, like no worries. <laughs> but when it comes to like my photography, I'm like, no, it's me. I make the decisions. I only shoot manual mode. What about your smartphone? Do you keep that on whatever the default settings are? Or do you go in there and like tweak every little thing? I use an app called uh, Halide, so uh, so I can tweak. But it's mostly like the exposure. Okay, but you're still a control freak even with the smartphone. Gotcha. Well, yeah, but not, but not really. Like, it's some, like sometimes I'll just go regular photo app and, uh, you know, just bang one out. Okay, it's actually funny. I was talking to another uh, photographer friend of mine last night, and 
I was asking him like what kind of camera he shoots with and everything. He does uh, wedding photography also. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's he uses the Canon who's better? 5D. What? Mm-hmm. Who, who's a better photographer in your opinion? Of course you, Marlon. I don't think he listens okay. to this podcast. All right, fuck. <laughs> you suck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but he but he was saying like he uh i think he's got the canon 5d which i think is mm-hmm. like a higher end camera yeah yeah no. yeah yes 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 and uh yeah he's like it's a great camera he he takes more pictures with his uh iphone 11 than he does his canon i was like mm-hmm. that's that's just like boggles my mind like you buy this expensive camera with all this gear and then <laughs> he's like i don't want to carry that around it's like i got the yeah. smartphone i mean I, we talked about it earlier and like i think episode one yeah, shoes for everyone but the shoemaker's kids. Yeah. Well, because f- <laughs> for you, it's your outlet, right? Like, you, like photography is going to be your hobby and you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be what you do when you're not working. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's it's like when I go to my family events, they go, why don't you bring your camera? And I'm like, oh, because like I want to enjoy my niece's <laughs> birthday and like talk with my family and hang out and like, you know, see her grow up. You know, and I'm, you know, it's, and I made that joke too. Like, why don't I bring my receipts over? You can do my fucking taxes at the table. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. We got a little off topic with the uh, the editing. Yeah. So you said that you have outsourced your Photoshop yes. editing before. Yeah. Uh, how did that go? And like, can you basically give us a rundown of like how, <laughs> how did you feel about that? Like, we're, we're, like, um, <clears throat> you kind of already touched on like you saw the yeah. photos and you're like, I could do a little bit better job. So, so in this particular instance, my contract says uh, twelve to sixteen weeks. Okay. For 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 finalizing all the images. Um, clients will call me in two weeks and be like, "Where are the photos?" And I'm like, "Are you are you serious? Like, you put your name on this?" And I'm like, and like, I remind them multiple times throughout the process, like how long it takes, and like they're like, "Yeah, of course, yeah, no worries. We want them to look the best, of course. Take your time." And then, uh, and then like a week later, they're like, "I don't understand. Why is this? Why is it? Why is it not the next day? I thought they're all on your memory card." And uh, like, I send an info sheet before like the wedding and it says like you know things just like by the way are there any like um uh, is there anything family history that like you want me to be sent like that like, you know sensitive issues i need to you know worry you know like things like oh your is your mom going to be here if your mom has passed away you know sort of thing so uh but like in that info sheet i you know i have a bunch of you know certain things like questions and, and whatever and one of them is just like you remember we talked about that's going to take this long for the photos like like you're okay with that if not like i can give you less photos and do it faster and they go no of course we want all the photos you know and like we want them you know we want them to you know do your work and make them look great i'm like awesome and then literally a week after signing that and like like sending it to me they're just like i don't understand where are the photos so there was like a couple that was just being like really obnoxious and i was like you know what i outsourced it the photos came back and uh, i did notice like certain things like uh, the skin tones were a little too red for my liking and uh like the photos were i think like a third of a stop overexposed for my liking i like things a bit darker more contrasty i shouldn't say darker but you know uh like i do like a bit more conscious not so like bright and blown out but i said you know what fuck it they want their photos like here you go i got it outsourced and i can get these people like so they're not driving me crazy and I sent them and, you know, and they didn't say anything. They said, oh, great. We love them. Every moment was fantastic. I'm like, great. <laughs> have a nice life. You know? So I think when I first started out, that would have killed me to, like, know that I didn't, you know. You didn't deliver your best. Exactly. But, like, but also when I outsourced them, I didn't outsource the portraits. I did the portraits of the couple myself. Like, I did my own retouching of that. Okay. And then it was just, like, you know, the getting ready, the family, the uh, ceremony, the party. and just... So, wow. Even when you outsource, you don't, you don't go all in. You're like, I still have to take control of this part. Yeah, well, I mean that because I think you know that's what I'm that's what I'm most well known for, and that's the best part. So. Okay, and so you were you were pleased with the results, I guess you weren't. Yeah, I mean, if there was time constraints, you would definitely do it again. Yeah, that yeah, it is, and uh, like um, I do know someone that started like a company. It was actually so you know the guy who I've who I've mentioned who who you know who's a very well known wedding photographer who gave me my first job in wedding photography. So he he started his own um, outsourcing company. And they have a lot of big name photographers there. And it's like a bit more bespoke. Like you can work one on one with a retoucher who will like, you can develop a style, you know. Oh, wow. And they'll okay. do it. Yeah. But obviously it's like a, it's costlier. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, is it worth, do I want to sacrifice my own income for that time? Maybe, like maybe I will next year, but it's, you know. I mean, yeah, right now you got nothing but time. So, but yeah, like you're saying, if uh, for the more difficult clients, it sounds like a an easy get it out get it over and done with uh solution yeah 
But also, I don't want to. I don't want to lose money just because someone's like annoying. I just have to be like, you signed this. Why'd you sign it? That's it. No, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So you're not completely against the idea of outsourcing. You just you like to have that control, and you also like money. So. Yeah, exactly. If someone, if someone, if someone else is like, I reach, I outsource all my foot. Like, do what you got to do to like deliver what you need to. If someone's like, I'm not good at editing. I need someone else to do it. Like, there's no shame in in saying that. Okay. For me, it's like maybe I don't want to part with that money to do something I know I, I am good at. Yeah, it's it's interesting that you brought up Fiverr earlier too, because um, and we've discussed this offline. I don't know if we've discussed it on the uh, podcast yet, but um, I am colorblind, so I can't see certain colors, certain shades of colors, I should say. Um, so when it comes to like photography like that's my biggest like concern is like oh no i can't do color correction or anything like that but right. it sounds like i can definitely outsource color correction that's like a, a basic thing yeah for sure okay that is cool i was gonna like limit myself to like uh black and white photography because i was like oh i don't need to see colors for that but it does it definitely opens up my possibilities if i can outsource the uh color portion yeah. of it <laughs> i'll send you the link to my to my friend's company they it's like like uh some some like tiers are like uh, a few bucks per photo. Oh, nice. Okay, very cool. So next question, cold segue. <laughs> yep. <laughs> cold transition. Yeah. <laughs> cold transition. Everything's just cold here. Yeah. We're not very warm, and I think people appreciate it. I don't. There's no long intro. There's no no. We're no bullshit here. I know, but we don't have to say cold opening. We don't have to say cold segue. We don't have to say cold ending. I want to. I want to keep doing that. It's an inside joke. It makes me laugh every time. I'm like, as I'm <laughs> editing it, I'm like, oh my god, no one's gonna laugh at this. But I, I laugh at it every time I go to edit it. I'm like, we're keeping it. But we're doing this for us. That is true. Yeah. And if they don't like it, they probably already stopped listening. Which shout out to the, uh, I think we had 16 listeners last week. Thanks. Oh, we're famous. Yeah. I probably just had it on repeat on accident or something. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Anyways, uh, cold transition. We actually kind of touched on this already, but the, is the editing process an extension of your style, or do mm-hmm. all photographers basically use the same techniques when it comes to, we, oh, oh, I, I need to I, touch I, up the light, I need to touch up this? Yeah, well, I think I, I did mention that. I said there's so many different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop, and like uh, I, I, I gave the uh, example of like a highlight on the cheek. If someone wants to make it brighter, someone might make it darker. It's um, Everyone has their own. Uh, Photoshop style and how they want to express colors or brightness or contrast or or things like that. Okay, well, um, I guess a better way to phrase this would be uh, you've done commercial work where you've like photographed uh, products and people for Mm -hmm. advertisement and marketing and whatnot. Right. Um, Is there a a general consensus within like the marketing field where a uh, um, a marketing firm is like we want it to look uh, I don't want to say like like a certain style, but like they have expectations Mm of like we were saying earlier, you want the person not to look real. Right. Is there a general look or feel that you're going for when it comes to marketing or uh, advertising? Um, well, every photographer will have their own style. And like, let's say your, let's say your um, style is like very gritty, realistic portraits of, you know, okay, or like street photography type things. Like you're not going to get hired to do a beauty photo yeah. shoot, you know, of a, of a model or, or something like that. So yeah, I, I have been in those meetings where people go like, well, this is the mood we want. And, uh, you know, like the, if they're professional, they they obviously already know this, but you have to still reiterate. Well, you know, this is how I do these things. Here, here's some beauty shoots I've done in my portfolio. If you like it like this, like I'm more than happy to do that for you. And they go, yes, we like your stuff. Like do with that, you know. So you kind of reach that consensus. Like I have met with clients and like, well, we want it to look exactly like this other brand's photos. Okay. And I'm like, well, like I can only make it look like my photos. Like, okay, like, do you want me to mat, like, the lighting's a bit more flat, like, the background is gray, like, you want me to do that? Fine. I'm not going to give them a lecture on, like, how they should find their own branding and own style. Like, <laughs> take the pictures you want. I'll take your money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Have you ever worked with a company who is like, just give us the pictures, we'll we'll take care of the, the Photoshop? Yes. And there's, how do you feel about that? Do you, you're like, okay, in whatever. A, in a commercial setting, it's like, it's not, like, my name's not going to be on it. Okay. Right? It's going to be in a catalog somewhere. Well, it's actually going to say, you know, photograph by, and then that whoever photoshopped is not going to have that name listed. But, it, like, it, because it's not, it's not like a magazine is doing that. Like, I, I've had photos, like, published, like, let's say, like, I photographed one of the uh, contestants on The Bachelor, and it was published in People Magazine. It was, like, a big spread. Like, I retouched them. Like, they were my photos. Like, I knew my name was going to be on it. Like, I wanted them to look as good as they could. I took okay. it extremely seriously, you know, because I think, of course, that was a huge, you know, like step in my career it was like a very big 
you know, shoot from me. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, if I've, I've photographed a, a, like a catalog for jackets <laughs> and, uh, like they had their own in-house retouchers who are professionals. So, you know, I'm not going to be like, no, what if someone sees like model <laughs> F7B G3 and they're like, wait a second, the contrast isn't perfect on that. Who took these photos? You know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's a jacket. Shut up guy. Yeah, exactly. If it has my name on it, I want it to look good. You know, especially like for my wedding clients, I want people to be like, wow, like these photos are stunning. Like, yeah, Marlon did it. Okay. So on the flip side of that, have you ever photographed something, touched it up in Photoshop, handed it to the client and then found out later that they re-edited it? No, no. Okay. I mean, obviously, like, people, like, will repost a picture on, on social media, on Instagram, and, like, add a filter. And yeah. it's, like, you kind of, like, kind of cringe, but I'm not, uh, I'm not, like, a stickler for that. Like, I ask them not to, but, uh, you know, like, people know that, it, like, people know that it's not me. I'm, like, this far into my career that if someone puts, like, a shitty, like, Snapchat, <laughs> like, dog face on, like, a cat, like, on a photo, they know, like, I didn't do it. Okay, yeah. But you never, like, work with a, a marketing company, and they're, like... And then you saw it in a magazine. Go, wait a minute! This isn't what I delivered. No. Okay. No, that hasn't. Happened. But like, even if it did, like, what can I? Like, what really gonna? You know, like, like I, I did, you know, fix her skin. I did make her look full. Like, it was, you know, like the magazine was extremely happy with the, like, they're very pleased with the results and everything like that. You'd probably beat yourself up too if you like delivered a final product and they retouched it. And you're like, no, it was perfect. Why did you touch it? Yeah, exactly. Why am I a failure? What did I? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that as well. <laughs> sue them so hopefully that day never happens yeah. Yeah. i'd be like i like i'm suing them and like the judge would be like well what are you asking for i'm like tell me i'm a good photographer <laughs> i want a written statement of that i'm good yeah. yeah i want it published i want it on a billboard for a minimum of seven days yeah and i want them to call me every night to tell me yeah. i'm a good boy I, yeah i need <laughs> you to validate my existence <laughs> Wow, how did you get into photography with all the, with these? Uh, no, no, that's a that's a deeper discussion. I think. Never mind. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> when it's not photography, like I told you, like I want to like start messing around with video. I showed you that wedding video I did. Yeah. I like did not give a shit. I was like, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. And like people were like, oh, like you made it look like a home video. That's so funny. I'm like, cool. Glad you liked it. I'm like, it's really really fun to do. And like I made tons of mistakes. Like when I edited, like there was like there was like uh, like a few skips in the uh, in the transitions between scenes and stuff. I mm-hmm. didn't give a shit. I was like, oh, you like the overall thing? They're like, yeah. I'm like, great. It was really fun to do. Good. When it comes to photos, it's like it yeah. keeps you up at night if there's a mistake somewhere. Yeah. When I box, I I make mistakes. I get punched in the face really hard. And I go, oh wow, great <laughs> great learning experience. I'm gonna do it. If I mess up on a photo shoot, I'm like, no, no. <laughs> You just start punching yourself in the face, like, yeah. do better. I yeah. need to learn. <laughs> exactly. So speaking of learning, how did you learn to edit? Did you just jump right into it, or was there any kind of uh, training? Or I I started this all, like, pre-YouTube. Oh, gosh. Wow. Um, yeah, I read books. Wait, you read books on Photoshopping? Yep, yep. They have a Photoshop classroom in a book, which is, like, Adobe's own very in-depth. Isn't that just a manual? Like, uh, what? <laughs> no, not it's not just a manual. Like it would be like um it would be like step one, like um like fixing a patch of grass and it would show you like what tool to use to like like do that. Wow. as I got as I got more and more into my career, like, you know, like now I can just if I'm curious about something, like um like uh there's there was a new skin like retouching technique that came out of fairly like fairly recently called uh like by fairly recently, I'm like within the last few years, mm-hmm. called um like high frequency separation. So I was like, oh, cool. And there was like just tons of YouTube videos on it. It was like very easy. Okay. Very easy to check out. But uh, a lot of photography, even just learning how to how to see. I'm looking at like uh, what I like doing is not just like reading about like technical manuals, which I, which I have read a lot on like camera settings and things like that and how to yeah. internalize that. But also just like looking at lots of photos, getting photographers books, like of just their photos and just like drawing okay. inspiration from that. Like that's what I found extremely helpful. So... Have you been editing your photos in Photoshop uh, since the beginning, or is this like a, something you ended up doing eventually? Or well, I fir- when I first started, I was shooting film. Oh yes, I remember that. Yeah, so I would develop my own black and white film, but all the color photos I would just send to a lab because it's way more complicated. 
so I, I never edited photos. And then when I got my first digital camera, like I started taking it, it was extremely daunting. And at first I was only doing like brightness, contrast, like mm-hmm. not really messing around or manipulating things. I, I actually had a friend who she would do a lot of the stuff for me because like she was very good at Photoshop. You know, and then as I started to learn, I was like, no, no. And then I then I became a control freak. <laughs> then it's all downhill from there. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, wow. Started with books. If you're interested in getting into this, you know, this field now it's like so much more accessible like you just watch a couple of youtube videos and bam you're able to edit i don't necessarily find that more accessible i don't like watching the youtube videos um i i listen i have a good attention span but i've always been more of a visual learner Mm -hmm. than like uh than like listening to someone and especially when uh, every youtube video starts with like a 45 minute introduction (laughs) yeah like i'm just like show me how to fix the skin you know (laughs) just show me the two minute clip of uh what i need to see not the 15 minute filler of you know telling me you're gonna show me and especially like when you're when you're professional it's just like okay like we're gonna use the dodge tool we're gonna do this it's like okay guys so there's something called the dodge tool and the dodge tool was invented in 17 (laughs) you know 40 and you're like oh come on like (laughs) i don't need to know the history of the dodge tool i just want to fix this one little part yeah exactly so i just it's, but it's the same thing with news articles. I don't want to watch a video on the news article. I, I want to just read the news article. Yeah. Like I, I hate going true. to a news site and it's just like like a video starts auto playing and you have to watch a commercial. I'm like, no, like like fucking write the news <laughs> and I will read it. But that's like everyone has their own their own style. So I I I it actually like I like reading how to do it better. Okay. But I was saying for like normal people, it's more acceptable. <laughs> that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, for normal people. <laughs> I mean, it is very interesting that you'd rather because, like, it's such a a visual medium. Like Photoshop is like. I mean, so they have visual. pictures in the books. I guess that's true. Yeah, I mean, man, you really hate that that video stuff. Such a but like, if uh, like um, uh, the like a uh, like a uh, something I got recently, and it was just like a PDF of like lighting setups using colored gels to like get like a neon cyberpunk look, and they just would have like. You know, let's say 10, like, like, sample lighting setups. Okay. You know, and I could see, and I can, like, within 30 seconds, I'm like, okay, cool, that's how they did it, I get it. Instead of having to watch a 10-minute video of, like, how they set this up and did it and everything and how it showed, like, I don't... See, I think that's because you've been doing this so long, like, you have this, like, this ability mm-hmm. to to picture how things are done and how they how they would work out, and, you know, you have this uh, f- photographer mindset. Like, for me, I would need to see all the pictures, I need to see the, I need to see the 15-minute YouTube video of how they did it. But even uh, even in university, like studying biology, like I, I I hated sitting there in lectures and like watching someone like describe something. I'd rather just like go home, read my textbook. Yeah. I, like I, I would listen I in class that. and write down what he spoke about, and like you know, absorb what I could, and then go home and like read about what I, like those topics that he covered, and then just you know do some problems on my own. And, like I'd have to see it. Okay. Yeah, I am the same way. So, dang, if I want to get into photography i gotta start reading books again damn yeah there you go youtube boy (laughs) i'll still i'll still probably do the youtube i'll just i'll skip around until i find the the 30 second clip of what i need to find (laughs) you work near a computer though so you have time yeah that's true sometimes i do want to read a book though but then i go to like pick up a book and i'm like man youtube's a thing yeah you can get an ebook if it makes you feel (laughs) feel better (laughs) yeah at that point i'll just do audiobook and just listen to it on my phone or something (laughs) Yeah, learn photography by audio. That, <laughs> there, that's awesome. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Describe. Well, I mean, we're we're doing a photography podcast. There's yeah, <laughs> it's completely auditory. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people 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 listen for our, our witty banter. The photography is secondary. Yeah, I mean, I'm learning a lot. Um, mm-hmm. One day I'm going to get a camera. I promise. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'll put that to you. <laughs> yeah, then you'll be even better. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be fun because then I'll, then I'll be able to hear about like things you're struggling with and things like that oh yeah i'm just gonna use this as my like uh uh my own support channel like yeah hey marlon i'm having this issue where this happens can you explain <laughs> i'm the only person in the world having this issue and like anybody listening will be like why are we talking about this but it's like i need to know how to fix this <laughs> well, i i get people coming up to me all the time with like technical problems i'm like yeah no i can't help you i can't help you there <laughs> i'm like i know how a camera works i'm like i can't open it up and uh and repair it but you've been doing this for so long yeah, exactly so you just bought a new camera you were telling me about right uh mm-hmm. the hasselblad the hasselblad um so that is like a 
a fa- like I, I don't want to say famous camera, I guess, but is it? Is it like a? Yeah, yeah, yes. It's uh, it's, it's well known. Camera. Yeah, if you're if you're like really into the history of photography and film photography, like the Hasselblad five five hundred three CX. So, if you were to take pictures with it and like post it on Instagram, would you like name drop the camera that you took it with? If because it's yeah, a, fuck more... yeah, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> 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 don't get me wrong like i don't give a shit about the car i drive like it's all about practicality for me and things like that but yeah i'm gonna flex my camera okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first hashtag in the instagram post will be the name of the camera yeah absolutely okay that that is actually pretty funny i do know that there are like film elitists out there where yeah yes uh, yes absolutely people there's, will go there's... out of their way to be like this was taken on film. I need you to yes. know that this was taken on film. It is important yes. that you understand that my heart is in this because it was on film. Yes, like... absolutely. So <laughs> I'm go- I'm going to do that once I get good enough with this camera. <laughs> like it's going to happen, but it's only because like I want to feel cool. It's not because like, I can believe that. Like if you do great work on digital, like a lot of my like my favorite photographers are all you know they all use digital. Like mm-hmm. it's it's what you use now. But like yeah, of course I'm going to be like, <laughs> I'm going to stick my nose in the air. <laughs> <laughs> okay so um i have I'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it to you too uh, I, I <laughs> i'm gonna less. yeah we're gonna have these conversations you're like martin help me pick out this camera i'm like yeah of course yeah anything you need and like then like in you know a few weeks i'm gonna be like oh <laughs> digital <laughs> fucking idiot <laughs> get a load of this guy <laughs> Hide your money, all the pores are out. (laughs) 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 Okay, I have two more questions on this uh, on for this episode. I'll try to get through them. (laughs) Uh, I'm not bringing up film ever again. By the way, (laughs) it's okay. It's okay. You're going to you're going to bring it up. I will, I I will somehow break my camera and be like, "Film's stupid." Here's why here's 10 reasons why digital is superior in every way shape or form. <laughs> okay, so uh cold segue. <laughs> okay, tell us about your greatest save that you've made when you've had to salvage a photo in post and that made you and the client happy that you were able to save or recover it or improve it. I th- like I mentioned like I think uh like the example of like uh the Jewish wedding on the chair where like you just you know something was like off with the exposure and i just had to brighten it up and just like it was a good moment like it's it's a lot of uh like i don't have anything where it's like oh shit like i really need to like salvage this but it's it's usually a lot of that like oh if uh, this came out a little dark like can i brighten it can i do this that's that's generally what it is do you have like one picture that you're like really proud of that you're like damn i made that look good and i didn't think i'd be able to no because like i said like i like i'm I, I, and like, yes, obviously I talk like a prick here, but like, <laughs> like I said, like part of why I'm a professional is I'm able to produce consistent results. And like I say, by taking a lot of photos, like I minimize that, like the errors. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, like, I, and I've done things like I've had to swap heads in portraits, you know, sometimes like you have these portraits of uh, these, these 40 person group photos. And like, mm, okay. I try to take 10 images, but like, there will always be someone blinking in them and then, you know, swap heads and things like that. But that's like, that's like fairly mundane. I wasn't like, wow, I'm a God. And I saved this, <laughs> this image bow down to me. But, uh, but like, yeah, you know, and thing, things like, like that, that uh, photo I mentioned, that one that I didn't like that my wife liked that's blown up in this couple's house. But <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned like that. Oh, I swapped heads. That's mundane. Like, that's that to me that seems significant like to, mm-hmm. to completely move somebody from one picture to another or like mm-hmm. the one where you had to remove the uh um remove the person from the picture the the, the removing the person was um uh, was uh was was very big I, I i did another one so i used to work for like this cheesy family studio when i was 23 and uh and uh we we used to do a lot of like um restoration of old photos like scanning people's old film photos okay and uh i like like and i haven't done that for 10 years like over 10 years um but like i've done some crazy stuff with that because that was stuff that needed to be heavily manipulated and see that's what i'm trying to i'm trying to get from you yeah why well, I, I i i just remembered that i did that <laughs> i just remembered that i had that job. You, you purged that from your mind you're like i don't want to yeah. remember this ever again 
Exactly. No, because when you like, I'm thinking about like just like work that I do now. Like, I'm not like out of like I'm looking like it's still digital. I see the back of my camera. So like, I'm, like there's times when I take photos. I'm like, oh shit, like like no, that need, this needs to be fixed. And I, like I just I fix it. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm like, Kate, hey, come back. <laughs> <laughs> Stand on the sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's but that's also part of it. Like you you need to be able to like also be confident enough to be like, this isn't working. Let's change it up. Instead of like someone who like don't doesn't want to admit that, and then uh, they end up with a bad photo that they have to like work on in Photoshop. I don't I don't want to do that. But you know, like you know, like one thing that stands out in my mind was a man that unfortunately passed away, and uh, his family brought in this old photo, and he was sitting down. His like jacket was open, and like there was buttons open on his shirt. And they said, "Can you like make it more presentable? Because we wanted to display this at his funeral." <laughs> you okay. have two days. Oh wow. And, uh, and like, so, you know, I had to, you know, close the buttons on his shirt, like blend, you know, blend in the shirt to, you know, it can't look like I just like took a white, white paintbrush and painted it on, you know, like the shirt has texture on it. Like I had to copy buttons from on top of the shirt to like put down, you know, where his belly was, where it was open. And then I had to like close the jacket completely. So I had to like take the lapel, rotate it, like paint in where the jacket would be using other parts of the jacket. And then like, um, also because when it's open, it looks bigger, like kind of like push in the body. So, um, so, you know, he would look like, 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 not like he would look like the size of a fridge. Cause like when you're, jack- you know, when you sit down, your jacket's open, it opens like mm-hmm. that. And then, uh, and then make sure as I'm pushing in the body, I'm not like distorting the background. So, you know, you know, when you see those like Photoshop fails where it's like, you know, like someone on Instagram, they're, you know, their body looks super skinny, but then you see like everything in the background is kind of like warping towards them. Yeah. So like you want to avoid that and everything. And like I remember I gave it to them. They were like ecstatic. It was like they were very emotional and I was like happy to do that. See, that's the story I wanted from you. Thank you, Marlon. <laughs> Thank you for digging deep and finding that. That's actually no really cool. So on the flip side of that, what's a picture you spent a lot of time editing only to end up just scrapping the whole thing and said, no, this is not worth it or this didn't turn out good at all? I uh, One of my strengths is... Um, I'm aware of the sunk cost fallacy. Okay. Like I don't, uh, I will not invest in something that I know is not going to work out. And if I can see it not working out, I'd like, I don't bother. Have you ever edited a photo or spent a a significant amount of time editing a photo and we're like, okay, I'm happy with this. And then the client's like, "Eh, what is this? Um, I notice a lot of my questions are reliant on your client, not liking stuff. And that's just not how you do business. But I'm just, I'm assuming uh, there's this like one jerk client that's like, what is this crap? Oh, You're I, like I spent yeah, hours. I, I have no. I've I've had my fair share of jerk clients, and like most most people, like like I deal a lot. Like people are very, they're harder on themselves than other people. Because okay. like I'll do I'll do a photo for like a team of of whatever of executives at a company, and they'll see the photo. And like everyone looks great except me. <laughs> yeah, that's you know that, that's how it like is, I, yeah. they're like I look so old, and I'm like, well, that's how time works. Yeah, you know, exactly. And it's, you know, and it's things like, you know, like, so they've, they're they never like, oh, well, they're like the lighting is bad and things like that. Oh, can you just like get rid of the ring? You know, so like I do deal with crazy people, like I understand. And then like there's the people that don't want to, like they, they just don't want to admit they don't like the photo. So like they blame it on me. And I, I, I've been much better at, uh, especially now, like, you know, like uh, this stage of my career at, uh, at uh, separating that from my own ego to be like, no, it's like they're mad at themselves. They're not mad at me. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, like, uh, like things like people are like, well, I have this shiny spot on the top of my head. Like, w- like, why couldn't you fix that? I'm like, oh, you're outside in the sun and your head is, is a shiny round object. <laughs> so like, I can't, you know, that's physics. <laughs> and if I make your head like perfectly matte, like, it, you know, like I can do that, but then it looks weird because like people, even though you're, you don't realize that something's off in a photo, like you, you know. Like when people do like uh, image manipulation, right? And like you have like shadows going different ways. Like your eye picks up that something's weird, even yeah, though you definitely. might not know why. Yeah. So like people get mad. Like I'm like, I'm like I didn't make you bald. <laughs> <laughs> but like obviously you can minimize that and things like that. You know, things like reflections and glasses and mm-hmm. things like that. But like the trick is you wear fake glasses without lenses in them. That's how they do them in photography, in like, uh, in like ads. For uh, wow. for eyeglass companies, there's no lenses in the glasses. Mind blown. Mm. Especially like I have a terrible prescription in my eyes. Like if I wear glasses, like you know, like you get that kind of like uh, distortion 
in the in the image. Okay. So it's hard to take photos of people with glasses. It's actually funny. Uh, I had a friend of mine who uh, does live streams on Twitch, and uh, he he always wears glasses, but I never see his monitor reflecting in the glasses. And then one day, okay. he took his glasses off, and he did not have any lenses in them. I was <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> He's like, I wear contacts when I stream, but I keep the glasses, <laughs> the frames on, because he likes the way they look. I was like, what's Is genius. that Mike? No. This, oh my god, please tell me he does that. No, but it's something he would do, I think. that. Oh, I'm going to ask him next time. <laughs> Be like, Marlon says you wear fake glasses. <laughs> like, just out of nowhere, I'm just presuming something about my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like something you would do. Yeah. Which I don't think he's... He didn't listen to last week's episode. I don't know if he'll listen to this week's. So Yeah? So you shame on him. follow him on Twitch. <laughs> we wouldn't make fun I of so, you if you listen to our yeah. podcast. Yeah, Mike, I hope you listen to the end of this episode because, you know, we've always supported you in your endeavors. So why don't you fucking listen to ours? We're asking for like, you know, 45 minutes of your time once a week. And your streams are like hours long, multiple times a week. Wow. Wow. You guys are friends, right? Yeah. But we're, we are friends, but the, but the next time I see him at the Apple Store, I'm going to flick him in the dick. <laughs> I, I feel like you would do that regardless, but... It just seems like no, seems no. Like I would not greeting. do that. I would. I would do not do. I would not do that regardless. Oh, okay. I would do it for very. I would do it for very little. <laughs> <laughs> but never unprovoked. But I would. Do, but I. But never for nothing. <laughs> I don't remember if you answered the question I asked earlier. Um, I'm gonna assume that you did because what? the the. Uh, a picture you spent a lot of time on and then the client ended up not liking it. Oh, well, we were talking about like, you know, like people when they complain that their heads look shiny or things like that. Uh, I'll tell you about this one disastrous photo shoot and it's like, I'll, I'll talk shit because it wasn't even my client. Um, my friend who is a photographer was uh, photographing. Um, it was for a real estate company. Every year they take their top sellers and they do like a fancy portrait okay. sort of thing. And they wanted like a, uh, you know, so they w- want to do one in an airplane hangar, like with an airplane in the back, and like give it some sort of like luxury feel. And uh, so he's a photographer that's like he's not so much into retouching; he's more of a just like a f- they have a family portrait studio. Mm-hmm. And uh, this this was not the one that I worked for back then, but um, but you know, he was like, "Oh, can you give it more of a fashion feel?" And I said, "Yeah, sure. You know what? I'll, d- I'll do it. No worries." And like this woman, every time I sent them something, like they liked the colors, they liked everything I did, but like she, she only cared about like what she looked like. She was like the owner of this company. Well, why does my hair look like that? I'm like, like what? She's like, why is it like, it's not perfect. And I'm like showing her the before and after. I'm like, like I didn't touch your, you know? And she's like, well, can't, can't you fix it? I was like, I mean, I, I guess, but like what needs to be fixed? And like I needed to like ask like specific questions because like yeah. she, this woman was like out to fucking lunch. Like bad shit crazy. Like everything I did. And like I would change something. She's like, well, now change this person. I would change it. She's like, well, why did you change this about me? I'm like, nothing has changed about you from like one image to the next and like i think it was just like to the point where it was like oh every change now costs this much wow and then and then magically it was perfect so (laughs) uh okay that's the kind of story i wanted to hear that is awesome yeah i feel bad for you about it but i got paid so don't you worry (laughs) Uh, okay so um wow so being a photo editor is a thankless job and it sounds like you get the uh, the worst brunt of the yeah. the client. I mean, usually there's like a middleman in that. Like if you're doing with like an agency or something, like in high end photo shoots, it's not just like they're not just like calling you and yelling at you, <laughs> but like <laughs> the client will talk to like you know whatever advertising agent who will like bring it to the retouching team. Like it's it's you know, there's more moving parts. And like usually if it's if it's the bigger the shoot, usually the more professional everything is. This was like gotcha. you know someone that hired a local photographer who like outsourced the retouching to me. And instead of, like, dealing with her, he just, like, let her speak to me directly. (laughs) (laughs) Which I don't blame him for, because I'm sure, yeah, she was crazy to him, too. So, you've actually been outsourced as the retoucher? Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is is that something you enjoy doing, or is something you would do, or is it just Uh, um, doing it as a favor for somebody? Yeah, I mean, I've done it, and and I don't mind it, but, uh, like, I I still work full-time on my own work. Mm -hmm. And retouching is... uh, is a big time suck. Yeah. If you know, if, if you're, if you're really going for the professional results, it's like v- retouching really follows the 80, 20 rule. Like you can, you can get 80% of the results with 20% of the effort. 
But okay. you know, when people want a hundred percent effort, like end result, like you gotta gotta put in the work. So the, there are shortcuts to things, but if you know, if if I take it very seriously, if someone's like paying me, you know, to get things right, like I want to do them right. Okay. But um. But yeah, so like I, I've done it and like uh, I've done favors or like help people out and like, you know, or, and taken a job or two, but uh, I haven't in a while. But uh, it's also, I like to be out and shooting and uh, and interacting with the with my clients, with my subjects. Um, for me, like the, uh, the retouching part at the computer is like a necessary part of it, but it's not my favorite part. Obviously, okay. like I'm, I'm, I'm proficient at it, but uh, like staying behind a computer screen <laughs> all day isn't uh isn't the best part and like i, I try to minimize that as much gotcha. as gotcha okay there's only so much netflix you can watch on a second <laughs> monitor interesting okay so we've come to one of my favorite parts of the show the deliberate tip what do you got okay all right so let's let's keep this photoshop centered for uh for this episode so the deliberate tip for today would be when you start learning photoshop everything you do dial it back by half so um like Photoshop allows you to use layers and it's kind of like remember like teachers you would have the projector and you'd have the cellophane on top yeah cellophane like those clear sheets and you could like draw on them and then have another layer so Photoshop has that like you can make a new layer brighten the eyes make a new layer fix the hair so uh, one of the big mistakes is brightening eyes and teeth for people who are new to Photoshop they make them like laser white <laughs> you know and like sometimes you want to get rid of like maybe a little like yellowness in the eyes or um or like you know redness okay so you 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 make them white and bright it also makes like everything pop a bit more but people have the tendency to like do everything at full blast like oh i'm gonna fix the skin i'm gonna make it look like pure plastic Ah, and sometimes like uh and sometimes like you can do that but then if you start dialing it back like to 50 percent or 20 percent opacity on the layer it like it's the big difference between like that professional look of like just a subtle change and like uh like a like wildly unrealistic change. Okay. So my Photoshop tip would be like learn how to do it, do it, and then just like dial it back until you know you start and then drag it up until it's like just noticeable and like boom, stop. It's like knowing when to hold back because you want it to look real, but you want it to look better. Exactly. So there's a, a fine line between real and fake. And mm-hmm. okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you don't want them to look like a Barbie doll or something like that. Exactly. Okay. Unless that's the look they're going for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's some people that are that are into that. Okay. Very good deliberate tip. I like it. Okay. Thanks for listening. Got anything Bye. else you want to add? Nope. Okay. Cold ending. Okay. That ran longer than expected. <laughs> it's all good. Thanks for listening to our podcast. I hope you learned something or got some good laughs out of it. Check us out at mandapod.com. M-A-N-D-A-P-O-D.com. Thanks again.